Hello and welcome. I'm Kevin Pinnell with this episode of the Hope Is Not A Plan podcast, Thriving After Cancer, A Journey of Post-Traumatic Growth. In today's episode, I'll share what post-traumatic growth is, how it differs from resiliency, and more specifically, how cancer survivors and their families can take actionable steps to turn adversity into opportunity and emerge stronger than ever. But first, welcome to the Hope Is Not A Plan podcast, where we address tough questions head on, face our problems, and highlight our hopes by providing actionable planning steps to improve ourselves, mind, body, and spirit. Now, let's get logged in and get locked on to this episode of the Hope Is Not A Plan podcast. In 2009, I heard the words, "It's, it's cancer. And as I sit here speaking into this microphone, I can picture the office, the doctor, my wife's face as we were both hit with this powerful statement. A month or so after I was given the diagnosis, I was fortunate to have a successful robotic surgery to remove the small tumor on my left kidney. And I'd like to say this is my moment of post-traumatic growth, but I'd be lying. I was appreciative. I was nervous about every little bump, but I didn't jump in to make my life and those around me better, at least not as overtly as I have in the more recent years. It wasn't the patients I saw on the street or the hot air balloon accident that I witnessed or the subsequent crash landing I was involved in and said, oh, I'm going to change the world. No, for me, it was my father's battle with cancer more recently that helped me grow and inspired me to share his strength with others. So here we are in season two, episode eight of the Hope Is Not A Plan podcast. Thank you for being here. So what is post-traumatic growth versus resilience? Because these often get intertwined, but they're a bit different, right? So resilience is the focus of adapting and adjusting. And some people are just more resilient. They just can. They're wired that way, right? Without a struggle, they can just get through hard stuff kind of naturally, or maybe they've built it up. Whereas whereas in post-traumatic growth, that's the focus of transformative changes. So we go through something horrible, trauma of whatever kind of different levels it affects people differently. And then we say, okay, that has shattered everything I believe in, or it has really changed the reality of the way I see things. And now I'm going to take these actions and then change my life. So one is we just kind of deal with it and we're able to. The other is we get really blasted by something and then we're going to dive in and take steps to get better. Just like I'm going to give you all five steps specifically for folks with cancer and their families. And the first thing to do is to embrace your emotions. We're all different. We all handle emotions differently or don't handle them differently. Some folks want to be stoic in front of others. Some folks lose it at the drop of a hat. But step one is to embrace them, be afraid, be mad, be angry, uh, be nervous. You know, whatever emotions you feel are okay because you just got hit with something that's terrifying that essentially says you have this thing now that can kill you, that has killed a lot of people, that's killed people you know, and now it's in your body. Which doesn't mean you give up hope, but you let that fear come in. You let the anxiety in. You cry it out. You go yell, you go for a run, you do something and let your family embrace emotions. Let them know it's okay to be scared and upset near me. Have you ever heard people whisper like, oh, it's cancer. Whispering doesn't make it go away. Embrace your emotions, number one. Number two, build a support network. Don't do this alone. Don't isolate yourself. Isolation is bad all the time, let alone if you have a cancer diagnosis. There are also a lot of groups and I'll, I'll speak on that as well. I've talked about connection right? One of the pillars here, but to build a support network, of course, the medical establishment should help you do that, right? Through care, counseling, those kind of things, but talk to people to keep it real. I've, that's one thing I have helped folks with is talk to them about what's it like to hear those words. What's it like to deal with it afterwards? The mental is harder than the physical often, and often they're mixed together. I'm fortunate. I didn't have to have any chemical treatments, radiation. I had surgery. I was sore a bit. I healed. I still think about bumps on my body, but that's because I I asked, right? My network in medical was open to me asking. They know you're going to be afraid. They know you're going to have questions if you have surgery or treatments. And and as soon as you're like, yep, we did that checkup and you're clear for five years. Now you don't have to come in every year or six months, but it's like cutting the umbilical. It's hard to let that network go, but talk to people who've been through it, get the real scoop, not the nice flyer version, right? That's pretty and looks good. And It's not good. So we're going to embrace our emotions. We're going to build that support network and set meaningful goals, right? Smart goals, smart objectives, make them specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time So basically, you have to have goals. Hope is not a plan. It's the name of this whole show, right? You want to have hope. Don't give that up. But you want to have a plan, 
right? And you want to talk through all of that objectively and transparently with the caregivers, with your family, with yourself. What treatments do I want to do? Take a chance on. What do I not want to do? You can get caught up in percentages and likelihoods in this kind of stuff. You have to understand that you can get really sick from some stuff and not as sick from others. There's experiments and that's a comfort. You just have to get the best information you can. So my goal is to find out as much as I can about my treatment options. Then my goal is to use boom, 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 these treatment options. Then my goal is to recover in this time. And you're going to talk to professionals the whole time, right? Then my goal is to get back into walking, get back into something. After you've had the treatment, the surgery, whatever's going to help fix this cancer. And if it's not able to be fixed, what are things I want to do? Because the unfortunate reality is sometimes our post-traumatic growth happens when we can't solve the problem, right? I saw this in my father. I've seen this in other folks. They grew so much. They went on trips. They uh, talked to people the way they never had before. And then they still, quote, lost the battle. I don't don't know that you lose a battle with cancer because people fight so hard. A fourth step we can take to foster that post-traumatic growth, particularly from cancer, is to practice gratitude for those that supported us as we embrace our emotions and broke down, as we built that network, as we set our goals that helped us get there. For those that saved our lives, that did the surgery, that gave us the treatment, that gave us ginger ale and crackers, that brought us meals. And sometimes it's really hard to do that when you're in the thick of it, when you're healing, when your loved one is just down and tired and feeling awful and and sometimes doesn't want to keep going, but then we have to. And so that gratitude, especially when we're coming out for the little things, for the sunrise, for the sunset, for the, like now the leaves changing, the, the, the fall foliage, something. While the name of this is hope is not a plan, that hope can fuel our gratitude that we need. And it's a huge difference in mind shift and it, it helps people pull through things that are very hard to get through. And fifth, embrace the learning, embrace everything you've learned, read books about survivorship, attend groups. There are, there are plenty of groups you can get from your healthcare providers, listen to podcasts to get those new experiences. Try that hard hike, go on that trip somewhere that you've always wanted to go, attend workshops on finding coping mechanisms and journaling and stress management and starting to get into exercises, your body heals and the soreness and the strength comes back and you put some more weight on and your hair grows back. There's always something to learn and push ourselves out of our comfort zones. I mean, you just fought so strong and so hard within an uncomfort zone. Now it's time for you. So to recap, Embrace those emotions because the journey from when something feels off to when they find it randomly to when they tell you you have cancer to when you have surgery and treatment is a tough one. You just you have to let them out or it will eat you up. You have to take advantage of this support network that you have. And if you don't have one, ask for help from the people that are that are medically helping you and they can connect you with networks. And you'll find that there are other people going through the same or similar struggles. And it's very helpful to talk about it and work with them three set meaningful goals. What are the goals to get you through today, through this week, through next month, through this whole thing, and then after? Four, how can you practice gratitude, right? Whether it's faith, that seventh pillar, mindfulness of gratitude from just taking time to yourself, from saying thank you to people that maybe you didn't talk to a whole lot. And the fifth, embrace lifelong learning. You've learned so much from this challenging, scary, frightening, infuriating, sickening, nauseating, all those kind of things journey. And you have a lot that you have learned and a lot you can still learn and a lot that you can share with others. Thank you for sharing your time with me on the Hope Is Not A Plan podcast. Post-traumatic growth is just that. It's after a trauma that overwhelms our mind and our body and often our spirit. But that last word, growth, is the positive thing that comes out of this. So whether you're resilient or your resilience breaks down or you're experiencing this post-traumatic growth, relish it and take advantage of it and live. Live for others that don't live, that couldn't win their fight, that fought so hard and then had to tap out. Thank you so much, please, for more resources. Go to hopeisnotaplan.org. 
follow the show on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Leave a review. That'd be very helpful to get more exposure and share these tools. You can follow me and this podcast and get updates on at Hope's Not a Plan on Instagram and Twitter. There's a Hope is Not a Plan YouTube channel where I think we're going to hit half a million views probably this week. It's largely fitness, 15 seconds at a time, so cold plunge stuff there. And there's a Hope is Not a Plan Facebook page. So when there's updates on the show, in addition to getting the subscription notification on your favorite platform, you can read a little bit of a write-up on the website and on those other places that I said. So thank you all so much for being here. Take advantage of this growth that comes out of such a hard thing. I wish you all Godspeed.